Do you want to learn about SharePoint folder permissions? Well, then this video is for you. I'm going to show you step by step how you can share a folder with an individual user. Now, there's a lot of different scenarios of why you might want to lock down a particular folder to only one or multiple users within inside of a SharePoint site. The scenario that I'm going to be talking you through today is one I've seen numerous times and it's played out in a couple of different ways, but I'm going to show you one way that I think that could work for a human resources department. So the scenario is that the human resources department has got a SharePoint site and they have a folder per employee of the organization. What they will then do is they will want to restrict that folder so only the employee and their line manager can see the folder and that the whole of the HR department can see all of the employee folders. So there's a few steps in this. So bear with me as we go through. I'm gonna explain each step, uh, step by step. And by the end of it, you'll understand how to recreate this yourself. So before we jump too much into the permissions side of things, I wanted to almost expand on this scenario a little bit further in the sense that you can see here, I've already got a, a whole bunch of different employee folders here. But what's very common in this type of scenario, which will make your life a little bit easier, so this is almost like a secret top tip of this video, is that if you did go with something like this, then what I would suggest you do is that you create what I refer to as a folder template. So essentially what we do is we build one folder with a folder subfolder structure underneath it, which we can then copy. So every time we've got a new employee that joins us, we don't have to go and manually create a whole set of folders each time. It automatically just create that folder structure for me. So let's do that. Then once we've done that, what we'll do is we will then create a new employee folder as if we were onboarding a new employee. And I'll show you step by step then what we need to do. So first, let's create our template. So if I click on new, I'm gonna click on folder and we can now pick these cool, trendy colors that SharePoint now offers us out of the box. Because it's just gonna be a template, I'm just gonna use the, the standard yellow folder color. And I'm gonna call this my employee folder. Now it's worth me mentioning before I go too far into this, you don't have to create this folder template. I'm just purely showing this for this scenario. I think that it would work really well. Um, the, the permissions I'm gonna show you afterwards doesn't rely on, on, on having a folder template. It's just making this step of the HR process easier. Then inside of that folder, we could then create some subfolders. So maybe it's related to personal development. Um, maybe we have a folder that's related to um, certifications, for example. Um, maybe there's a folder related to training. I'll put a good spell. Come on, fingers. Click on create, and there we go. So obviously you can build this out. You could even have subfolders within folders if you wanted to. But essentially what I'd, I'd advise if you're using folders in this way, have a folder template of like this. So that way when you're onboarding a new employee or whatever this scenario is, you can select that folder. You can click on the three dots across the top if it doesn't appear, and then click on um, copy to. Now, essentially what we're doing is then making a direct copy of this folder with inside of this own library. So then I click on copy here. I might get a little pop-up message which says, do you want to keep both because it's trying to name something the same. So I'm going to say yes. And what that's going to do is create me my duplicated folder with just a one on the end of it. So then what I can do is I can rename this folder, the name of my employee that I'm onboarding. So I might say rename this and my new employee is called George Wales. And then I'm gonna give a color to his particular folder. So I'm gonna make it this nice blue, click on update, and there we go. We've got my folder ready to go. Now, again, before we go in and break down the folder permissions, it's worth noting that I'm breaking the permissions at this folder layer, so the George Wales layer. Then any of these subfolders underneath it are gonna inherit the permissions that I set at this layer. So I don't need to do it for all of the individual subfolders underneath it. It's gonna inherit the permissions that I set at the folder level of his own name. So if 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 you, I, I probably should have pre-fixed this video by saying, if you've not watched my other video, which is about 10 minutes long, which explains how SharePoint permissions are structured, I would go and watch that first. 
Um, I will link the video inside of the description of this video to make it a bit easier, but it will just give you a bit of an idea of how SharePoint permissions are structured from the top to the bottom, starting all the way at the very top of the, the kind of architecture all the way down to the bottom. And what it explains is that permissions for a site are set at a site level, which you, you set, for example, at the human resources level, those permissions then get um, sort of trickled down into the documents library. In the document library, um, it then goes to the folder permissions, then the folder permissions then apply and go down onto the file level permissions. And at any one of those stages, you could change the permission structure. So I could say, I've got access to the human resources site and you've got access to the human resources site. That gets inherited to the document library. So you've got access to the document library, but then at the folder level, I've then said only I have access to the, to the Dougie Wood folder and you don't have access to that. So you don't see that folder. Um, there's, there's a few other nuances to that and a few other kind of like roles that will trump that kind of level of access. But as I say, you need to kind of go and watch that other video first to explain how some of the roles can kind of um, even bypass what I'm about to show you today. Um, and therefore more like real super users, IT admins, sort of site owners, things like that. So now we've got our folder. So we've got our George Wales folder. I'm now wanting to lock this down so only George can see it, the HR admins can see it, and his line manager um, can see it as well. So the first step in this is I'm going to select the file, the sorry, the folder. So I, I make sure I've got the right one. Once it's highlighted, I'll click on the three dots next to it, and then I'm gonna click on Manage Access. So once I click on that, a pop-out should appear over the top of the folders, and it'll say Manage Access. Now, I can see that I'm currently inside of the George Wales folder, and I can see there's three tabs here. So the tabs represent people, so individuals that are named against this folder currently. And what's not very clearly explained is that this account here, Dougie Wood, the reason why I'm a named individual against this is because I'm the site owner. So I'm the original site collection admin, so that's why I've got access to this. Now again, in the other permissions video, I explain that site collection admins have got access to everything on that site and you can never lock them out of anything, even with this permissions folders structure stuff that I'm going to show you now. The second tab is groups. So these are the SharePoint groups which are applied to the SharePoint site. Traditionally, they'll have the name of the site followed by owners, followed by visitors, and followed by members. Members will have edit access to everything, visitors have view access and read everything, and owners have the full control of everything. So what I'm wanting to achieve is that I don't actually want the visitors and the members, the people who can come and read um, the, the kind of the files from the human resources site. I don't want them to have, have access to this George Wales folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into, for example, visitors, and then there's drop down where it says what can they do on this particular folder. I'm actually going to say remove direct access. So I'm removing it completely from them. And I'm going to do the same for members as well. So I'm going to click on edit. On that drop down, I'm going to select remove direct access. Then what we've now ended up with is we've now got it so that we've removed all of the kind of group access. So anyone who had read access to this SharePoint site will no longer have access to this particular folder. We've only got the owners left of the human resources, which is exactly what we want. If you remember, one of the steps that we wanted to do was make sure that the owners, the admins of the human resources had access to all of these folders and still could see all of these folders. Um, the final tab is links. So this is anything that you've sort of shared a link with. So if you've ever selected the folder and clicked on share and sent it out to anyone, it will show up in here. So you can choose to revoke that access if you wanted to. So this is a really good place to come to understand this. Now, the final step that we need to do is we need to add the employee, George Wales, and his line manager, Chris, to this folder so that they can see that folder as well. But first... Let me pause for a second to ask a favor. So there's two things I would really appreciate from you. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to the channel for future videos. The second is I also now run memberships on my channel, which start at a measly 99p. Now, if you go to my channel, and I'll also put a link directly into the description, if you click on join, you'll see that you can join um, my channel membership for just 99p a month, 
what you get with that is there's some loyalty badges. Now, these look a bit naff at the moment, but I am having some cool ones created, so you can have some cool um, SharePoint-related badges. Um, there's priority replies, so as my channel's growing and getting more and more people joining, I'm struggling to keep up with answering everyone's questions. I'm trying my best, but it is eventually going to become too difficult. So I'm going to create a members area inside of uh, my channel where there'll be a priority Q&A. So if you've got any questions, I'll surely answer them for you and make sure that you've got any SharePoint questions answered. And the final thing that you'll get with this is some exclusive members only videos. So these videos, for example, I've just published a step-by-step -step guide on how to build a really cool, modern SharePoint internet every step of the way. Um, it's over three videos. Part one is free and then part two, which we talk a bit more about um, fleshing out the internet, designing it a bit more. Part three, in which we're talking about department sites and how that relates to hub sites. All of that is part of the membership only. So go and check that out. And the other final thing as well is I'm also running polls to ask people about what types of training videos and things like that they'd like to see in the future. At the moment, Power Automate for beginners seems to be leading the way, so that is definitely something that I'm going to be looking at creating in the coming weeks. As I said, I'd really appreciate it if you would support me with this. Um, I do create all these videos in my own time, um, so anything you can do to help contribute, um, as of course there are costs involved in sort of running my own environments and licenses and things like that. Right, so back to the video. The final steps that we need to do then is I need to then share this with the employee, so George Wales and his line manager, Chris. So if I click on the people tab, and then I'm gonna click on start sharing. So this is where I then type in George's name, select George, and then um, on this drop down, I can just make sure that it's set to he can edit the folder. I can give him a little message as well. So he will get an email notification. So I'll say, um, hey, here is your own HR folder. Then click on send. Now that will then send an email automatically to George and it shared that folder with him. Now, I do have to then click on the cross, which brings me away from it, which means then if I wanted to add his line manager, I have to do click on the three dots, click on manage access again, and then within here, I can now see George has got access, um, and if I wanted to, I can then click on share again and add his line manager. So I add in Chris this time. Uh, again, I can say this is the folder, or this is the HR folder for George. Please take a look and upload any relevant documents. Then click on send. So again, that's then shared it with Chris, his line manager. So that's all the steps um, essentially that we need to take at this point. Um, one thing I'm gonna do uh, off camera now is actually all of these folders, they're still inheriting the permissions of um, the, the wider site. So I just need to go through now and actually just remove all of the access and set the access to all of these folders as well. Um, so. I'm going to pause the video for two minutes and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as George and show you what he sees. Okay, so now I'm logged in as George Wales. You can see up here, I'm in a totally different account. And now when I enter here, all I see is my own folder and the subfolders which sit underneath it. So that's it. That's a step-by-step -step guide of how you can ensure that a certain folder um, has only got access for certain people. And you can use this under loads of different situations. Um, it could be for um, even things like external sharing. Um, if you were having a folder for an external party, like a supplier, a partner, or a customer, for example, and you wanted them to upload um, files and folders to that, it could be for a whole host of different reasons. Um, this is just one example that I see used quite a lot. So if you enjoyed this video, as always, please do like, subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you are enjoying all of the content that I'm putting out, again, please do um, become a member of my channel. It's really appreciated. It really helps um, the channel grow. Thank you very much for your time.